Yeah, Namibia is just basically one big desert and it's crazy. The wildlife there from the flamingos on the beach to the jackals to the seals, it's, it's really raw and intense. And when you get to see that wave for the first time, it's, it's crazy. I didn't think something like that existed. It's just picture perfect. Obviously, before going to Namibia, I'd seen tons of footage on social media um, of the wave. But seeing that footage would never really give you the perspective of when you're there firsthand and you're on the beach and you're seeing the waves break. Um, so I can't, I can't even explain it to you. It was just unreal. It was unbelievable. I remember that moment, like getting to the beach and seeing that setup and just seeing how perfect the wave actually is and how long the wave is. Like you can't see the bottom of the wave. The point's so long that if you park like halfway down, you're literally looking behind the wave. That's how long it is. One of the things with a wave like that is that you really do need to spend some time with it to get good at it. You know, it's, it's a very fine line. Jordy Smith always said that, you know, it's probably as wide as a ruler edge is where you're actually able to surf the wave. Anything too high and you're getting, you know, bucked right over and in the lip and anything too low, the lip's going to get you on the bottom. So there's just this little section. Yeah, Namibia, I mean, the donkey skeleton, whatever you want to call it, is pretty insane. I mean, it's, it's unlike any place wave in the entire world i mean even just the drive and mission there every morning is pretty wild and different um but then when you get there down to the beach and everyone's frosting and been talking about it days before you know everyone waking up early in the morning and then when you actually arrive there and see the wave honestly no matter how big it is if it's small big it's still just super surreal at the wave itself is it just breaks completely differently. It's like kind of disorientating, to be honest, but in the best possible way. So yeah, we got down to the beach and the waves were firing. It was some of the best Namibia I've ever seen. And we got news that uh, Monster was going to be running a contest, the Skeleton Bay shootout, uh, over the period of days where the waves were, were good. And it was just, everything sort of changed for me. I was like, there's so many photographers and videographers on the beach. This is really a chance for me to make a mark. And it was game on.
So yeah, this first swell was done and dusted and we looked on the charts and the second swell was coming in and looked even bigger and better. And we also started hearing names of Kelly Slater, Jamie O'Brien, Nathan Florence, um, all these guys coming, like 20 of the best barrel riders in the world. You know, I felt the pressure, felt like this is my time to show everyone what I got. And yeah, that second swell was just big and ugly and scary. It was, I personally think it was the biggest swell that's ever hit Namibia. It would have been the best surf ever seen if it was offshore. Um, there was a couple guys that paddled and it was pumping cross shore into the tube. Uh, it wasn't pretty, it just looked like sort of an injury that was bound to happen and um, I kind of just saved myself for those those days where it was four to five foot and firing. Yeah, that second swell was just out of control, too big, scary, so much water moving. You going, you going. <laughs> but before that and after that, it was just perfection, four to five foot and just, yeah, something out of a dream. It was mind boggling.
<laughs> no, red, 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 red. Go back, go back. Reverse a bit. 